Hello everyone, so welcome back. Uh, this is uh, going to be a continue uh, uh, sections for um, the tree models um, chapter. So today what we're going to do is to build a more advanced tree model. Um, so um, mainly focus on building multiple trees um, because um, the last time when we talk about the tree models in the lecture, we know that um, a single tree model, um, it's going to uh, provide a very high variance um, in uh, testing results. So what it means is um, the tree model, it's um, specifically doing extremely well for the training data set. Uh, you can actually keep uh, building branches for a single tree until you have a very good fit to your training data. However, because of the uh, complexity of the models, um, uh, divide up the data set into uh, this very, could be a very complicated uh, uh, structure of the tree to uh, fit the data, fit the training data especially, um, it might actually uh, encounter a problems of overfitting uh, when we are trying to use the model to predict the unknowns testing data. So today what we're trying to do is uh, basically um, using um, a few different methods um, to build a tree model that can uh, reduce um, the possibility of overfitting and also we are trying to build a tree model that can um, improve uh, the predictions uh, significantly uh, by uh, using those techniques. So um, the three uh, methods that we are going to talk about today is um, bagging, random forest, and boosting. Um, to be honest, um, the uh, bagging, it's basically just a special case in random forest methods. So that's why uh, we are not I'm going to have a lot of new packages to learn or libraries to learn in R today. We are mainly focusing on uh, two uh, packages that we are going to use. Uh, number one is the random forest package and number two is the tree package that we introduced uh, in the previous lectures. So in order to um, run the um, demonstration today, again, um, if you have not installed these three packages yet, um, definitely, I will uh, 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 advise you to uh, install it to your machines. So today we are going to use the Random Forest Library, the ISLR for data, and the library for tree, and also the MASS, again, it's the uh, data we are going to use um, for our demonstrations today. So today we are going to use the uh, Boston data sets first um, in order to uh, uh, investigate uh, the uh, the use of the uh, uh, bagging and random forest um, so that we can make a comparison uh, on the result. So very similar to our previous exercise, we first split the data, data set into uh, half um, so that we can um, use uh, half of the data in this Boston data set to train our model. And then we are going to uh, test the model with our uh, testing uh, data sets so that we can compare the results, how well um, the bagging or uh, random forest actually improve our predictions or reduce uh, the uh, prediction error. So here we are going to uh, set a random seats here. Uh, we are going to uh, uh, get the number of observations, which is number of rows in the Boston data sets. And we will split the data into half. So we define the splits is 0.5. And we are going to use the sampling methods here um, to basically uh, draw half of the random uh, index number from a total number of observations from uh, Boston's. And we will define uh, the index that is not included in the trainings uh, will be uh, saved or assigned to uh, a test uh, index. So we will define the Boston data sets uh, uh, here with only the training index uh, that we randomly sampled uh, in the previous lines into a training data set. And we also assigned the testing data set as the one that's not included in the training. 
And we're also going to take the outcomes from the Boston data sets, which is from the testing uh, uh, data sets, uh, and save it as an outcome so we can later check uh, to see uh, how well the predictions uh, predict the results. And again, today we are going to use uh, Many, the random forest uh, library, to uh, do the bagging and random forest uh, demonstrations. Um, the reason is because, well, bagging is basically just a simple case uh, of a random forest. So if you want to know about the random forest uh, uh, functions or the package, uh, you can definitely take a look up here. Um, so you can find how um, to uh, use the random forest um, uh, uh, models and also how to uh, put in the arguments um, into the functions so that you can um, adjust uh, to uh, the specific um, specifications of the models you want to uh, tune in. So we begin with uh, the bagging. So on the bagging sections, um, we are going to first build a random force model. So again, we use uh, random force functions and we are going to define the response variable here, which is the medium uh, price of the housing in Boston data sets. And we are going to use all the um, predictors, uh, all the uh, columns in the data sets, except for medium income, uh, not medium income, but the medium uh, sales price, and put into this model. Again, um, if you forgot about the three models, um, uh, why we are putting all the variable in there because um, uh, all the three models in R um, actually allows you to um, put all the predictors into your models and uh, the model itself will try to find the best tree for you so that you don't have to worry about which variable to use or not. So here, uh, this is basically one uh, important thing to note. So we are going to uh, put the data sets, which is using the training data sets um, that we created earlier. And now this parameter or this argument here, it's very important. We are defining um, uh, the M uh, tree here, which is uh, basically the parameter that allow us to define how many um, uh, predictors we are allowing the random force to uh, make a predictions. So again, in your class lecture, you already learned about the idea behind random force and begging. So begging, it's basically a special case of random force when we are trying to create a um, uh, 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 bootstrap uh, data set to uh, build a forest, build, to build multiple trees, right? To aggregate the results, uh, we are thinking about every time when we're building a random tree, uh, we are using all the predictors that is uh, basically from our data sets. That's basically the idea behind backing. We are using all 13, um, and then we're just building a bootstrap uh, 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 data sets from this three, uh, uh, all 13 uh, pro uh, predictors, and um, trying to say, hey, if the data change in such a way, we will have this tree, and if the data change, uh, uh, the bootstrap data set change into this following way, we will have a different uh, uh, structure of the tree because, well, the data change. Um, so again, um, when we are building a bagging model, we are basically using all the parameters um, in our data sets, uh, not parameter, but predictors uh, in our data sets, um, and trying to build random trees um, with all the specific uh, 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 predictors defined here. So we have total of 13 uh, predictors that we can find in the data sets. So that's why we define here 13. So in your future project, if you're using a, a random force models or a bagging technique, um, make sure you check um, how many uh, variables or how many predictors you are passing into this random force functions. Let's say you have uh, five predictors only in your data set and you're trying to use a bagging technique, then you have to define um, this uh, argument here, um, m tree, uh, m tried, um, equals to five. So that will give you the result of bagging. And here, the last param uh, arguments we put in here is um, importance equals true because later we want to uh, uh, also uh, take a look of the um, uh, the which predictor uh, has the most significant impact to the tree. So uh, importance will report um, if you actually define true here. 
So let's run this model. So again, um, the MTLY arguments will give you the flexibility to uh, make change of the number of the variable randomly uh, sampled as a candidate of each split. And the default uh, is, so the default um, for uh, uh, doing a, uh, 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 the random force, it's basically using uh, square root of p uh, in classifications and p divided by three in regressions. And also uh, the number of trees uh, that we are going to use or, or to create number of random trees that we are going to create will be uh, 500 here by default. You can you can define you can actually put in an argument uh, into a random force um, um, functions to define how many uh, trees how many bootstraps uh, data set you want to create but the standard uh, here is 500. And now um, we have a back uh, backing uh, model here, backed Dart Boston, which is the one that we uh, 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 created here. So let's see what it returns. So here, the um, model here returns with um, some informations, uh, the specifications, right, that you defined um, in your um, codes, and also we know that this is a regression uh, problem. It's not a classification problem, it's a regression problem because the response variable is in uh, quantitative uh, data. We have 500 trees that we built and number of uh, variable tries on each split is 13. Remember we try, uh, we put in everything right into uh, creating a bootstrap data. And then uh, we have the mean square residuals from the model. So that's good, right? So uh, not much uh, we get, we, we're getting out here. Uh, especially, you have to keep in mind, whenever we are using a bagging or random forest or boosting, we are creating a forest here. So we are no longer allowed to print a tree structure so that we can see how the decision is being made in the predictions. Because well, we, we are aggregating um, all the trees that we build in this random process um, and we do not know how um, each uh, decision is being made when we aggregate all these trees. So one of the downside about bagging or random forest or, or, or uh, boosting is that we are no longer allowed to see the tree structure of the model. We cannot print the tree anymore. However, um, we are going to talk about this in uh, just a second. Um, we can actually identify still which variable will be the most important ones in this model. So again, well, let's take a look at what it's in the uh, backed model here. So if we print the name of the model, um, it will return a list of things. So it will return um, the call, the types, the predicted, uh, the MSE, uh, the mean square error, um, the importance, uh, and um, how many tree we use, um, also the coefficients, the uh, in back and term, right? So those are the things that were reported in the uh, uh, backed models. So we can use uh, the summary again to try to get all these uh, results backed, right? So the call types, predicted, MSE, and so on. However, the summary of this model, uh, it's not gonna give us a lot of uh, information about our uh, model uh, because the fact that, well, the, the complexity of the um, uh, of this uh, random uh, uh, um, uh, tree models, right? We are trying to create a forest. We create 500 trees at one time. Um, the complexity of this um, cannot be expressed uh, by just the uh, summary table like we've seen in the regression models or maybe a logistic model. It's almost, um, some people might actually call this like a black box, right? So you bas basically, you build a model, you specify a model, uh, and then, well, what the model does, it's basically running through this very complicated uh, calculations in the background and uh, it allows you to do the predictions, but it won't show you about like how it's done. Again, um, there is one thing that we can do, right? At least we can actually calculate the importance of each variables used in the model. So we are using this function here, importance, so this important functions basically will return um, 
uh, uh, values that represents the importance of each predictors in our model. So let's take a look at this. So once you uh, use the importance uh, functions uh, for this uh, model that we just built, there are two measures, right? Two columns returns right here. So there are two columns. So the first one, it's basically the mean decrease um, of the accuracy in the predictions when you take out that one uh, predictors from your model. So what it means is um, the greater the number it is, the, uh, the more uh, you are adding to your, um, to your error terms. So you take out that one particular variable, well, unfortunately, it will decrease your accuracy rate. That means well, it adds more error to your models. So as you can see here, the one with the highest number on the first columns, well, those are the one that it's the most important in the model. Because if you doing it without this variable here, this predictors here, well, it will increase the, uh, uh, the error rate or decrease the accuracy rate so much. The second columns, on the other hand, uh, will calculate the total decrease in not impurity that result in from the splits. So again, uh, the NUT in, uh, impurity, it's measured by the training RSS, and uh, um, for classification model, it will be at the deviance of the trees. <laughs> so what it means is basically um, the, the higher the number it is, um, when you're taking this um, uh, variable out, uh, unfortunately, it will it would uh, create uh, a higher uh, uh, um, uh, problems to the uh, tree model structures. So, in, in general uh, speaking, uh, this value here basically tells you how important it is uh, this predictors to your single tree models. So again, well, um, by looking at this number, obviously we we know that uh, some of these variables are extremely important, and some of them are not as important as the other ones. Uh, in order to have a very good visual uh, 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 observations from this uh, importance, uh, we can actually use these functions here called uh, var in plots, and we put in this model here in the functions and we will be able to see which one is the most important in our model. So again, so well, this plot right here basically tells you the two value here, right? So the impurity of the, um, of the nodes and also the, uh, the uh, increased um, uh, uh, the mean square error, right? So uh, when taking out those uh, variables, so it uh, seems like uh, they are very consistent, right? So the top one right here, Rm, it's basically the, the, the most important factors in the model. And then um, LSTAT, uh, it's a second one. Um, and then crime, age, um, well, there's some discrepancy here, right? DIS is the fourth one right here on the right-hand side, but uh, NOx is the fourth one right here. Uh, it might not be in lines totally, but then, well, obviously, it provides you a very good vision on how to determine which variable is uh, the key determinant in the tree models uh, that we are building. So now, <coughs> since we are uh, building a model with bagging uh, technique, uh, we would, of course, uh, ultimately want to uh, make a predictions with it. So doing, uh, making a predictions from a bagging model, it's uh, pretty similar to uh, your uh, previous uh, uh, model predictions um, that you made in linear regressions or maybe in a logistic model or maybe a single tree model. So again, we are using the functions predict. You pass in the, uh, the, the fitted model, the back dart uh, Boston, and then you define uh, what data you want to use um, in order to make a predictions. So here we use a new data equals to the testing data. So we're using the testing data and trying to get a predictions, right? So we save it into a predict start back. And now what we want to do is um, trying to plot the predictions uh, on a graph so that we can compare it to the actual data in the testing data sets. 
So we plot this. So here on the x-axis, those are the predicted value from our model and corresponding to the actual data in the testing sets, right? This is the actual outcomes. So if the model can make a very, very good predictions uh, on the testing data sets, uh, we should expect to see this data uh, to be on uh, a straight uh, uh, slope of uh, equals to one uh, uh, lines. So we want to actually plot a line to indicate how well the models um, actually make uh, predictions on the testing data set. So we plot the uh, line right here. As you can see, well, most of the results actually are uh, basically on this uh, uh, single line path. And you want to actually calculate the mean square error, the testing mean square error to see how well your model does, right? So that later you can compare it to other uh, models. So you can actually calculate the mean square error, again, very similar to the previous uh, uh, lecture. Uh, we're using the predictive values from the model minus the actual value from your testing data sets and you square it and you sum all the results together and take an average of it, right? So you take the mean value of it. So you save it to uh, the mse.bag and it tells you the model is uh, actually making a uh, mean square error of 23.4579 from a bagging model. So with the standard uh, bagging model, we have 500 trees, right? So it's a lot to do. Well, let's say if we want to try to build a smaller forest, right? So a smaller forest, a, a number of trees that it's not 500, but less than 500. So can we do that? Obviously, yes. Everything we do here, it's exactly the same. We're using the random forest functions here. We put in the response variable against the, uh, all the predictors in the data sets. We're using the training data sets in this uh, model building. We are using bagging, so we define, we'll use all the predictors. And we want to get the importance later. And here, this is another new argument you uh, can see here. So entry will allow you to define how many bootstraps data sets you want to create in order to build a forest. So remember, each bootstrap data sets that you created will build a single unique tree for you to use to aggregate right, in this uh, 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 bagging um, uh, models. So here, what we're defining here uh, uh, with this uh, argument is to tell random forest functions. We only want to create 50 unique uh, bootstrap data sets and build only 50 unique trees in this model so that we can aggregate them and try to make a predictions from these results. So let's try to run this right, and see how the result comes up. So we run and we save it to a backdart Boston in this case. And we're trying to make a predictions, right? So using a prediction functions. And we're trying to calculate the mean squared error and store it into msc.back.50trees. And let's see the results. Oh, okay, so interesting. So in this case, we're actually seeing a error term here from a 53 forest. Well, comparing to the forest we have, which with uh, 500 trees, uh, we might actually get a higher or lower number. It doesn't really uh, tell you that uh, one is better than the other, but the number of trees uh, will tell you, well, how complicated um, you have to be right, in order to make uh, predictions for a testing data set. And in this specific case, it seems like um, the error is not increased um, in this case, but actually uh, very similar to your uh, 500 trees forest with the bagging technique. Well, again, so well, every time you run the, um, the, uh, the random forest uh, with a particular tree size, um, it will throw you a different number. Remember, the whole process of bagging is to create uh, bootstrap data sets that we can randomize uh, the process uh, for picking the data with replacements and then create a unique single tree. 
So for instance, if I'm going to run this uh, uh, random forest uh, with 50 trees again, and try to make a predictions, and trying to calculate the mean square error, every time you are making a, um, uh, uh, a predictions or building a model with the uh, 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 specific uh, uh, tree models, you are going to expect to see a different results returns. The reason is because well, every time you build a model, a bootstraps uh, 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 resampling methods is going to create this unique data sets um, and we will aggregate all the results together. So that's why, well, it's very, very important for you to know um, how important, uh, how, how uh, as, um, great the two bootstrap actually provide for us. And now um, we have look at well the results in bagging. So it seems like well this is basically the error term we can get from bagging, right? And now what we want to do is um, trying to um, Im implement a, f a random force uh, uh, technique here. So a random force basically it's a, a technique that we can use to um, reduce the overfitting problems from our backing model. So remember, the backing model is good. It randomized the uh, data sets uh, into a bootstrap, but um, it's, not, it's not breaking down the, tr the, the tree structure uh, 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 enough. Um, as we discussed in the, in, the in the lecture, we know that, well, if there are a few strong predictors in the uh, data set, it's very likely even though you are breaking the data sets into a bootstrap randomized uh, sample sets, um, if those predictors are so strong, the structure of the tree of each unique single trees should be very similar in some way. So when we aggregate and average out the trees together, it might not even provide you with this uh, very uh, 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 big variations right, that you can actually uh, uh, tell about, well, uh, it's uh, uh, are we getting the same thing over and over again, right? So when you're averaging something that is similar, right? You have a bunch of number, but it's all two and three, two and three, two and three. When you add them all up and divide it by the number of observation, you always get a number close to those. So we don't want that, right? So it's overfitting. So instead, in order to reduce the overfitting or maybe the problems in backing, um, we're using a uh, second technique here called random forest. So the main key takeaway in the random forest structure is that we are going to basically define the randomized um, uh, structure of the tree not just by the bootstrap uh, data uh, uh, resampling, but instead we also add one more element to it. We want to actually define uh, how many predictors <coughs> that we can use for each time of the split of the tree. So what it actually means is <coughs> we are trying to define the total number of predictors that we can use for every uh, split of the tree that we create from a bootstrap data set. So um, I think uh, you are already getting a good idea from the lecture. So um, here, what we're trying to demonstrate is uh, to basically show you how we are going to test which um, uh, 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 parameter we should use in order to say, well, uh, that's the number of predictor we should use for a randomized uh, structure of the tree. So here we are defining uh, basically um, uh, a, a tree, uh, the predictors that we are going to use, right? Remember uh, in the previous uh, example, we can actually define this argument here, M T R Y, which defines well how many predictors you are going to use. Here, what I'm trying to do is to create a for loop to run through. Um, I want to use one predictor uh, and uh, uh, to to put into this random force model. So every split, I can only maximally use one predictor to split it, uh, and then it will loop through and save the models and it will go into the predictions and calculate the mean square error of this model. And then it will go back up and trying to put in two. So each time we will have two predictors that we use to split the tree and how it's gonna be, uh, 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 how it's gonna return 
right, from the results. So again, we, we keep storing it until we use all 13 uh, um, uh, predictors, right? Just like uh, the bagging models that we create uh, in the previous examples and see how well it uh, make the predictions, right? The mean, uh, to calculate the mean square error. So every time when we try to um, calculate the mean square error, it will store into this uh, mbs.rf um, uh, as a result. So let's run this for loops. Uh, oh, okay, so let's run this first. And we run the for loops. And when we create um, the number of uh, MTRY. And now what we're trying to do is to plot the results with the maximum number of predictor can be used in the random forest models and trying to see uh, which uh, number give us the best results. So we plot it. So we have a very nice plot. Again, um, uh, we define uh, a vector right here from 1 to 13, which is the x-axis we define here. And then we also um, have the values uh, of the, uh, the mean square error, right? Plot against this uh, number, 1 to 13. And we found that there is a minimum point that we are reaching, right? So that uh, creates the lowest mean square error. So this <coughs> mean square error um, at around, um, I would say, well, let's see. So the lowest mean square error we get is 18.82235. If you cannot see this very clearly, right, you cannot actually say, well, which one is the 18.82. Um, you can also use the data dot frame functions um, to frame those uh, numbers, right? So MSE.RF. So let's see. Oopsie. So, um, oops. Um, I'll have here. So, as you can see, right, so we're reaching to the lowest number here when we have uh, the maximum uh, predictor to use is three in the random force pro uh, models. So, if that's the case, well, then we, we stick with that, right? So, let's say, well, this is the best. Uh, 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 um, uh, values for number of predictors to use, then we use it, right? Again, we built the tree, uh, the random forest, just based on this parameter. Again, um, random forest has a default of number of trees. So we are building 500 trees by default. We are, in this process here, what we are trying to do in this process here, what we are trying to do is to determine what will be a good values to put into this uh, MTRY uh, arguments so that we can use the one that creates the lowest error. So again, we save this into a RF dart uh, Boston. So we will try to run the predictions with this time, not the training data sets, but this time we are running the predictions on the testing data sets. And we're going to calculate the mean square error. So the mean square error in this case, wow, significantly improvement. So as you can see here, we are getting a 18.74988 mean square error from the random forest models. Again, comparing to the Baggins models, 23. 0.3958, 23.4579. It beats all the bagging uh, model results. So that means, well, this random force uh, uh, model actually successfully breaking the tree structures into a more um, variable, uh, 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 or actually a much more um, uh, simpler structure. Right, so we, we're basically trying to break the tree to make it less uh, uh, specific so that we can use it to predict the unknown data. And in this testing error, error returns that we, uh, we, we are getting an idea 
the random forest model is actually providing a much, much better prediction when it faced an unknown data set. So again, well, same thing, you can actually uh, call out the importance of this model, right, to see which one is the most important uh, predictors in your random forest models. So again, if you don't want to read the number, you can actually use the plotting functions here. Again, while well, we see this consistently, RM and LSTAT, which is um, uh, the two that was uh, the most important to found in a bagging uh, uh, models. However, um, there is a significant change in the new new priority um, in this uh, column right here on the on the right hand side of the graph. It used to be crime the uh, the third ones and then age to be the second one, uh, to be the fourth ones. But now we have seen the change of the order. So what it means is basically this uh, randomized process. Uh, in the random force, um, take by taking out some of this uh, variable for each time we are splitting a tree, um, allow us to build a tree that is less rely on the strong uh, predictors in the model. So the structures of each unique tree that we build, the 500 unique trees that we build, will have some tree that is more focused on the importance predictors, and there will be some trees that actually based on the least important uh, 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 predictors in our models or in our data sets so that it creates these variations, allow us to make a predictions that can be more flexible to fit to the unknown data. So again, well, this is very conceptual, but I'm hoping that this provides you a very good demonstration about how well um, the random force um, is performing uh, against the bagging models. Well, moving forward, in a more advanced uh, uh, um, uh, technique that we're going to use, um, the boosting, well, in this case, the boosting is um, a similar concept. We are trying to build multiple trees. However, um, in this case, we are not building the trees based on the bootstrap resampling data sets. Again, the boosting concept is very different. The boosting concept is to create multiple trees using the existing data by uh, different splits, right? So the size of the tree will be the difference. Um, uh, it depends on how you define the trees that you want to use. Um, every split of the tree will have its impact to the results. And we are trying to keep track of this impact and we are trying to um, calculate the, um, the inference of each split of the tree, the small split of the tree. So again, well, uh, building a boosting, uh, uh, a random uh, forest, or a boosting forest, right, uh, or boostings uh, in general, uh, we have to use the package called GBM. So again, well, if you haven't installed it yet, well, you have to run this code, install.package, GBM. Um, uh, if you are already installed it, you can just call the library. And we are going to set the random seats. And if you don't know what GBM here, well, you can uh, actually look it up. Right? So the generalized boosted regression modeling. So this is a, a models uh, a, a methods that we can use to um, apply the boosting uh, 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 methods to our uh, uh, tree models uh, building. There are some very uh, fine details here that you should note, uh, especially um, about the distribution use. So when you are using a boosting uh, technique um, for building a tree model, it's very important for you to uh, pay attention to uh, which distribution you are going to use um, in this model. So again, um, in a uh, simple, very, very, uh, um, uh, 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 easy way, um, since we are focusing so much in this class on predictions of uh, the quantitative response and qualitative response, which is a regression problems and a classification problems. So whenever you have a uh, regression problems, um, in most cases, you want to use Gaussian's distributions to calculate the mean square error of your model. So again, the Gaussian is going to tell you um, to, uh, to uh, when you're dealing with the uh, regressions uh, problems. 
So when you're a response variable, it's a quantitative one. It's a number. When you're dealing with a classification model, there are multiple distributions you can use. Again, the one that we usually deal with is a binary choice, right? So uh, just like the logistic regression models, we have a binary choice of either zero or one, right? So if um, we have the result that said yes, well, we define one, and then with the result that's no, we define zero. So if you have a binary choice response, you will need to define um, the distributions in your model with Bernanoli. So this basically is a uh, binary choice uh, uh, distributions. Again, if you do not know what it is, obviously, I, don't, I strongly suggest you guys to uh, go online and take a look at this uh, uh, Bernoulli uh, distributions structure. However, um, it's basically what we cover in the logistic regression model. It's exactly the same distribution we use. Well, there are other distributions you can also use, like the Poisson uh, distribution. It's a, another uh, forms of binary choice distributions. You can actually have a binary choice uh, uh, problems, a classification problem using a Poisson uh, 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 distributions. However, the, 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 the structures, right, the, the interpretations of the Poisson uh, distribution, it's very, very different ones to the Bononi. So uh, for now, we are basically just keep uh, it very simple. If you have a regression model uh, or regression problems, use the Gaussians. And if you have a binary classification model, use the Bernoulli uh, um, uh, distributions parameter. All right, again, well, um, we don't want to go too deep into uh, explaining what to use um, here, but um, uh, there is one more thing that you have to define here, which is the number, of, uh, the value of lambda. Again, um, the lambda uh, is the one that determines um, the learning rate. Right, so the default values um, in a GBM uh, functions uh, where lambda is equal to 0 0.001, uh, which is a learning rate um, of the tree models. So <clears throat> let's see. So using the GBM functions, we are passing in again the response variable, right? The structure of it is always the same. So the response variable that go against uh, the predictors you are going to use in the model. So again, well, because it's tree model, so we are going to pass in everything in there. And we defined using the training data sets. And we are going to define also very important, right? Because our response variable, the medium uh, uh, sales price of the home is a uh, quantitative uh, uh, response variable. So we are using a Gaussian distributions. And also, we are going to define the number of trees that we're going to create. Again, very important. We are not creating a tree based on bootstrap technique here. We are not using a bootstrap data set to create unique trees. But instead, we are building a unique trees based on the existing data and existing um, uh, per, uh, uh, predictors we have in the data. Uh, we are creating a, a smaller tree uh, so that we can actually uh, uh, aggregate them to see well which one is more important and which one is not, and then we'll combine the results. So interactions. So interaction depth is another uh, uh, um, parameter or arguments that we use in boosting. Again, uh, the uh, parameter um, uh, um, depth actually give you the flexibility um, to define um, how you are going to, um, yeah, about the, um, the tree, how depth of the tree you are going to build. So if you have, let's say, the interactions uh, depth equals to four, that means you allow the random uh, tree to be built um, into a maximum up to four layers. So what it means is it can actually branch out one time, two time, and three time, and that's it. That's basically the maximum depth of the tree that you're allowed to build. So in, in the textbook and also in my previous lecture, um, we actually talk about um, usually, usually uh, when we're building a uh, boosting model, uh, we can only use just um, the depth equals to one. So uh, when the tree depth is equal to one, basically we are just using a stem, right? So when, when a tree only have two branches, that's it, one layer. 
Um, in, th in this example, we are trying to uh, build a tree model, right? Uh, a boosting tree model with uh, the depth, right? Every random trees that we build will have a maximum depth of four layers, right? So four um, uh, in uh, um, uh, branches going down uh, the levels. So let's try to uh, run this. And we have the models. It's going to take some time because um, uh, boosting is very different to uh, bagging. Here, there are some competitions involved. And now what we're trying to do is to print the model here. So again, just like the, um, the baggings and random force outputs, uh, the model output here does not give you uh, uh, any things to, um, to interpret here. So it's not a very interpretable uh, uh, result here that you are getting. Um, so you can also try to print the summary of it. So the summary will give you an idea how, um, in, how important um, each of these variables are um, in your uh, models. So again, very similar to um, what you've seen in a importance right, parameter that we're getting from a, uh, from a, uh, 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 a random force uh, um, uh, models. But in this case, well, obviously, well, um, we actually see the relative uh, inference from each uh, predictors that we put into the model. Lm uh, is uh, the uh, is the most important ones, right? In this case, um, and istat uh, is the second. Uh, crime is the third ones, and so on, right? So uh, very similar to uh, what we've seen in the previous um, importance uh, outputs. Also, you can uh, print um, the summary of uh, this uh, Boston's. Um, uh, uh, medium uh, uh, price of the housing, right? To see well how how it distributes. Um, so now what we want to do is um, trying to um, basically plot the in uh, the partial dependency uh, for um, the two most important uh, predictors. So again, um, this uh, partial dependency plot is going to show you how uh, the marginal effect of the variables to the uh, models as a whole. So again, well, let's try to plot this and see what you're getting. So as you can see here, right, so um, we have a plot right here that's showing um, us some very important information. It literally tells us that um, the um, how important, well, this variable, um, our m, um, the marginal effect of it, um, um, when this effect um, goes on to the response variable, after we integrating out the other variables in the list. So that's basically um, um, the, uh, the, the, the definitions of this graph right here. And this graph tell us, um, it seems like, well, when our m keep increasing, uh, the response variable will also increase too here. So basically we expect when um, our M increase, um, the price of the housing will also increase. Another uh, 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 very uh, important uh, variables that we see in here is the LSTAT. So again, you can plot the uh, partial uh, dependency plot uh, for this variable here against um, you are seeing the um, ISTLT on the x-axis and the response variable on the y-axis here. And you actually seeing, well, as the um, LSTAT actually goes up increasing, um, the values of the housing will start dropping. Right? So I think this is the, the, uh, the, the conclusions we've drawn in the um, previous exercise in the different videos too. So <coughs> Again, well, uh, you want to actually understand the intuitive of this uh, uh, relationship. Again, well, if you don't know what RM and LSTAT is, you can always ask, right? <coughs> so in this case, you can try to go back and say, oh, okay, what is um, RM? Well, number of rooms per drilling, well, which makes perfect sense. Well, the more average number of rooms, uh, the more expensive the house is. And what is um, LSTAT? the lower status of the population in percentage. So um, the more uh, 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 people that actually live in your uh, neighborhoods that has a lower status 
uh, of the populations, then obviously it pulled the values of the housing down for that particular area. So, which makes sense uh, in this case when we're plotting the, uh, the, um, the partial dependency plots for the two uh, important uh, uh, predictors, we are seeing the results that seems to be very logical. So now let's get uh, predictions. So using a um, boosting uh, model to run the predictions, um, again, there is a uh, additional uh, argument you have to put in. But um, generally speaking, you basically put in your model that you created. You put in or identified uh, what data sets you want to use. And in this case, we're trying to do the uh, testing error. So we put in the testing data sets. And also, you have to define well how many trees you are going to use as your uh, predictions, right? So basically, um, um, you have to define this parameter specifically only just for boosting. So let's run the predictions here. And now let's calculate the mean square error. Wow! So from the boosting model here we have uh, a specification with 5,000 uh, unique tree that we built. We're using the Gaussian uh, distributions and uh, with the depth, maximum depth of the tree to four. And we get a very, very nice result. This result is actually comparable to the random forest results, 18.84709. So let's take a look at the random forest. What does it generate? So 18.74988, very similar, very, very close. But of course the random force is a little bit slightly better uh, to the uh, boosting here. Well, if you are trying to um, improve your boosting model, you know what, well, you can actually try to tweak this model with uh, changing the parameters of the arguments. So for instance, remember the lambda that we use in the model, it's by default 0.001. Well, you can actually think about, should we actually slow down the, uh, the, the learning rates in the models uh, even more, or should we actually increase the learning rates um, in this uh, boosting model so that we, it allows the model to, to get to the solution faster, but then well, we, we're probably going to miss out uh, something uh, in, uh, in the ways of how we learn it. So here, this is what I'm trying to do. So we're creating a list, right, of vectors of uh, a learning rate, right, range from 0 0.0001, the first argument here, and 0 0.0001, which is the second argument, 0 0.001, 0 0.01, and 0 0.1, and 15.2. So we save this, and we're going to create a for loop, and um, it will have a counter in there. So we start with one. And then uh, we create a, a seven empty slots, right? A zero uh, uh, array, um, so that we can save those results into a MSE.boost. So let's run through this for loop here. So we are trying to put in different lambdas, right? So D from lambda, and we are going to create a model <coughs> where we put in the training data sets, right? So uh, response variable to, uh, to all the predictors, the training data sets, the Gaussian distributions, well, same 5,000 trees that we're creating, same depth, for depth, maximum. And now this is basically the lambda that we learn in the textbox, which is the shrinkage of the models. So the same shrinkage here, it's defining the learning rate. So this shrinkage um, is bigger it will uh, basically uh, forcing the model to learn faster. Um, the, the lower the number it is, um, the, the less impact. Um, actually, the, 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 the smaller the number, the, the um, less we are slowing down the model. So what it means is basically it, it, it speed up the model's learning uh, process. However, the bigger the number it is, it slow down the model. It slow down the model's learning um, and um, only allow the model to learn in a very, very uh, uh, slow fashion. So um, we have uh, some parameter that we already create, right? So um, those are the number we are going to pass into this for loops. 
So uh, we are going to see which one will get us a better result. So same thing, we are going to basically make a predictions and calculate the mean square error and then store it. And then we'll uh, make the counters in this case. So let's see, run this. So it seems like everything is um, stored. So let's, uh, I think we run the code already here. Yes. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the results. So we want to see, well, for each lambda, how well uh, we are getting the, uh, the training um, uh, mean square error. So let's see. So it seems like uh, the model telling us uh, we are reaching to this, uh, 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 the low mean square error very, very quickly, right? So um, probably by this point right here, which is the fourth options, um, it's already reaching out to the lowest points. So let's see, uh, what is the minimum here? we're getting. So what is the minimum of the mean square error? So 17.79. So that's impressive. So again, we are basically getting the testing error here. So it's much better than the 18 point something that we're getting earlier. So in this case, well, obviously, uh, we can uh, uh, basically ask the question, well, what, what, uh, what is the, uh, the best lambda we are getting, right? So even though I have it here, you can try to uh, basically create a data frame and uh, show it to yourself, right? So uh, we have lambda, and then the msd dot boost. <coughs> okay, so it seems like well, seventeen point uh, seven nine seven is happening right here. So we are basically uh, have the lambda equals to 0 0.01 will provide us the best um, uh, results for the testing error. Well, after refining the uh, lambda uh, parameter, can we actually do more to improve the model predictions? Yes, that's a wonderful things that we can do in boosting. In boosting, there are three uh, parameters you can actually keep treating. Uh, in order to get a better result, to basically uh, modify it. So in this case, we can also ask the question, can we uh, build a different size of the forest, right? So different number of trees, like 50 trees, 100 trees, 200 trees, and so on. So let's try to do this, right? So we have the tree size here that we defined. And then again, we create a counter here. And we are going to create 15 slots to, so that we can store the, uh, the mean square error from this uh, uh, followed. Again, the very similar concept. We are building a model uh, response to all the variable. Data, uh, data set we are using training data. The Gaussian distributions. Well, in this case, well, the shrinkage that we pick, it's already the best we have, right? So 0 0.01. And the uh, depth of the tree is four still. And this time what we're defining here is the number of trees that we are going to create uh, for boosting. So it will follow this uh, pattern here. The first loop will be 50, the second loop will be 100 and so on. And then we store the uh, mean square error, right? Make a predictions, store the mean square error and then adding up on the counter. So let's save. So let's find this for loops. So it takes some time, so as you can see, well, it's run so long. Because why? Because, well, at some point, we're getting to a model that it's creating 9,000 or 10,000 trees. So this for loop is going to take you so much time. So it's finished. Now let's try to run the plots and see which uh, uh, tree size will be uh, the best to minimize the error term. So it seems like we are reaching to a minimum point close to somewhere here, 4,000. Again, um, you can actually try to find the minimum number here right, by using the min functions. And the minimum error we are getting from uh, this result is 17.39. So let's see what ha uh, where does it happen. So 17.4 uh, lines right here. So 
uh, 17.39. Oh, okay, actually it happens in uh, the size of seven thousands here. But as you can see, well, uh, across the board from here and on, right, 4,000 and on, it seems like all of these are uh, particularly doing better than our previous results, right? Because uh, our previous results here is 17.79. So we are further reducing the uh, testing error term by using one of this um, uh, size of tree to make a predictions. So can we actually treat one more things in the model to make even better results? I would say, well, don't stop, right? So try to build in more uh, uh, um, uh, a better uh, parameters, right, for this argument um, in order to m reduce the size of this testing error. Right? Keep building this for loop and trying to find which one will be a better parameter to put in to train the models, to train the data, so that you can make a better testing uh, predictions from your models. So in at this point, I think I'm going to stop and I'm going to basically leave you some rooms for you to basically play around with this model and you can try to treat another parameter, uh, the interaction dab, right? So is it uh, one dab, it's the best, second dab or three dab, or maybe uh, dab is equal to four is the perfect one. So you can play around with this number. But um, the whole purpose for this demonstration is to show you how incredibly uh, we are doing by applying this three technique to improve the testing error, right? To, to improve the predictions accuracy for the testing data sets um, uh, by the technique of bagging, um, random forest, and also boosting. So hopefully um, it will give you an idea um, how uh, much work um, we as a data science will have to do um, in order to find that best model specifications to make a good predictions for an unknown uh, data set uh, in, in the real world. All right, so um, at this point, I think I should put a stop. Um, it's um, uh, been a very long lecture here. So I hope you enjoy these videos. And next time when we come back, we are going to jump into the um, regression model again, but this time we're gonna put a little trick on the regression models to make it a more flexible, uh, lower bias, but higher variance models uh, for our predictions. All right, so I'm going to see you guys in the next videos.